Okay, so this is the 1200XL that we were working on on Sunday. And when I when I was finishing the machine off, I noticed that um, I noticed that the machine would crash when I went into the self test from basic. Regardless of which uh, operating system, this was with the 32 in 1 um, Atari Max board fitted. Regardless of which operating system was selected, when I went into the self test from basic by typing by and then selecting the memory test, um, the memory test would crash. And this only seemed to happen when the EEPROM with internal basic was also plugged in. Uh, in the upper 28 pin socket. When I removed that uh, EEPROM with BASIC on it, things seemed to work, but then I tried a cartridge and the machine would lock up again. So eventually I tried, a, I removed the, the 32 in 1 completely and it worked, the machine would work perfectly with or without the basic EEPROM. So I deduced that there was something wrong with the 32 and 1 board, or, or at least, if not um, anything wrong with it, um, the machine just didn't like it. But it works, it works fine with just a, a stock masked. OS ROM and the basic EEPROM. But before I send it back in that condition, there was just one more thing I was going to try, which was to try a different flash ROM. So that's what I'm going to do now, just to see if it alleviates the problem. Um, I doubt it'll work, but I thought it was worth a try. So I've got the original flash ROM from the board in the programmer, um, and I've just read that chip back. So I'm going to take this out, take this chip out, and I'm going to put another one in here, and I'm going to try and program the chip see if it works. It doesn't like it. And it doesn't work. Let's try. It's this bad chip. Now it works. Okay, so we're programming this chip. Now this software here is uh, Easy Pro software for the Easy Pro 90B programmer, which I've had for about four years or so, or more. Um, and this was bought for me by this was bought for me by Sebastian or Candle, Sebastian Bartkovitz. Um, because I needed a a decent programmer for the um, the ultimate one megabyte and incognito driver that I was working on, um, and it's worked really well. But the only problem with it, well, the the first problem I had with it was when I uh, when I used to run Windows Seven, and I went from a thirty-two bit Windows Seven to a sixty-four bit Windows Seven. There was no sixty-four bit driver for this programmer. Um, and that kept me off a 64-bit operating system for a while. And then a driver turned up eventually, so I was able to run Windows 7 64-bit with this programmer, which was great. And then Windows 10 came along, and the driver still works. The 64-bit Windows 7 driver still works 
with Windows 10 but you have to run the operating system in uh, with driver signing disabled uh, be otherwise the driver won't work, it won't recognize the device at all which is a bit of a pain um, but it, it works so it's not a massive inconvenience and, it, and it's quite versatile it does uh, EEPROMs I just did an EEPROM with it yesterday um, but it's it, it's a, I mean, you could say it's Microsoft's fault for all this sort of uh, lockdown of the of the driver system but uh, anyway that's programmed so we'll pop that in the 32 in one board let's see what happens um. good the extraction tool hasn't destroyed the legs that's always nice okay let me go over to the machine and pop the board back in and if this if this doesn't work I give up uh, I just give up but I said I would give this a try and we'll see what happens okay we won't bother plugging the, the keyboard light in okay power up okay basic powered up no problem go to the self test start and it works fine and we have one working memory test what I'm gonna do actually what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the other chip back in I'm gonna push me luck here because it works now and if I I'm probably gonna no my luck I'm gonna make it not work again well I want to make it not work again because I'm going to because I want to demonstrate what happened so I'm going to take this back out All right, and put the original chip back in the one that I cloned this is the same kind of flash chip it's an SST 39 SF040 I'm going to plug the keyboard back in and there we go power on and basic type by self test start and there we got whoa screen corruption and the ROM test has hung and there we've got the oh look at it look there's the screen is completely breaking up and that's what was happening so let's take that chip out again I'm pleased about this because something's actually worked I told the owner of the machine that I was going to try this and I didn't really have high hopes for it but uh, there you go that's a nice surprise it's nice for something to go right for once let's put this back together I'm gonna I'm gonna actually plug the I'm so confident that I'm gonna plug the the LED ribbon in as well there we go power on basic buy self test start and it works So, oh, where did I put the chip? Oh, there, here it is. Right. This is great. So, this chip here 
I mean it programs and to all intents and purposes it works it's not damaged um, hmm but the machine doesn't like it for some reason um, this isn't the first time I've seen stuff like this because uh, there was I remember installing a couple of Ultimate One Megabyte boards years and years and years ago when they used to come with Amic flash ROMs fitted in them and they used to fail quite a lot and I replaced one with a, an EMD flash ROM and the machine just went crazy when it booted up uh, and I think when I eventually put an SST ROM in, like this ironically enough uh, it worked fine so I don't know maybe it's just a bad batch or yeah well anyway that's worked and that's brilliant so I think we should probably just to be on the safe side I'm going to try it with a basic cartridge because that's something else which wouldn't work at first and see if the machine powers up because the machine would just with that other flash ROM the machine would just go crazy with a basic cartridge plugged in and so we still get the boot menu yeah there we go everything works so that's great I'm sure the owner's going to be absolutely delighted so there we go the 1200XL with a 32 in 1 board which didn't work properly has been fixed simply by replacing the flash ROM chip okay so that's offered some closure on this little saga all right then I'll see you next time bye bye